My name is Ham Donishman, and today we're going to have another session of their series of videos for training purposes. Today we're going to talk about our Verisys user interface, talk more about the tree structure, and talk about the settings and some of the features within the settings and device list. I'm going to be starting by looking at a Google map. Uh, this will be another training session that I will cover at a later point. Please look, look forward for that uh, training session. We're using Google Map as a tool to be able to access multiple different Verisys sites. As you can see, we have a Google Map on the screen right now, and there are several uh, Verisys sites that I have identified. But we will cover that at a different session. If you're interested, please come back. So today I'm going to click on a project that we completed in Louisville, Kentucky about a year ago. And this particular project has been upgraded to the latest software from a testing purposes. But the user interface, there's only one major change uh, that uh, I will show. And uh, in this case, at least I could show some of the new features of Verisys 2.0, which is called Spaces. But I will be going into what's called the device list, which is Verisys 1.0. And you will see the device list and some of the features and settings within that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the Masterson's food link here. I will click on the link that I have identified and we'll, I will proceed to the Verisys sites. Uh, the first thing you obviously have to do, you have to log in and provide your password and credentials to the site. And uh, <clears throat> this is a live system, so it's going to take a few seconds here, and it will log in to the various sites, and it will serve up the page, the main page. Now, what you're going to see, this is a little bit different than Verisys 1.0. You're going to see what's called uh, spaces, and this is a new feature, and this is soon be coming uh, end of this uh, summer of 2017. We're hoping to have it released by. Uh, September time frame. The big difference of the spaces is that uh, it's different from the device list which I will show you and that's what this training is about is that you will get a one page uh, summary of all your spaces and then association with the space uh, to the equipment itself. So on one look you'll be able to see the description of the space, you'll be able to see the temperature the change of color showing you if it's cooling or heating or if it's satisfied and then obviously the occupancy. Right here from this screen uh, you can open it up and be able to change a set point if you like. Uh, this particular unit it's only uh, providing cooling only. Uh, let's say if I go into this other one uh, this one is also within cooling and heating that's why you see the heating set point here as well. So basically right here on the screen uh, you can make the change a change of set points as necessary and you do see a link here this link here gives us the direct access to the relationship of that space to the equipment which in this case is a single zone rooftop unit so I'm going to go back revert back to Verisys 1.0 and so what you're going to be looking at right now this is a typical screen which you would see on Verisys uh, 1.0 and uh, this is what we call a device list. A device list will, will change itself based on the type of equipment it's connected to. So if it's a single zone rooftop, you will see this type of uh, user uh, experience. You will have a single zone rooftop here and there's no indentation underneath it that tells you if there's any kind of zoning underneath it. In the case here, we do have a change or a bypass so you will see the actual zone coordinator. If you think about the architecture of the system, you have a zone coordinator for every zoning system. And then you will have your associated rooftop and then all the zones and zone dampers and the bypass damper that's associated with that uh, rooftop itself. So this is what we call a device list. And device list gives you uh, the information that's necessary to go further into detail of that particular piece of equipment. So if I click on a single zone rooftop, you will get your uh, your typical, uh, what we call circle, circle of, this is our home screen. And this, in this case, is showing it is cooling. 
and it's got two stages of cooling on 58 degrees supply and it's trying to maintain the set point that it's needed this particular piece of equipment is being controlled by what's called the TEC and the TEC set points uh, are being changed or control in this page right here and then you will see all these different menus that you could go into for this particular controller so if I need to change the control setup I could go into the control setup and be able to come in here and make the changes that are necessary for example if I want to change the control mode from cooling and then change it into auto so that way I know it's switching from cooling or heating in this particular the customer decided they want to just keep it in cooling so a lot of different configuration can be done as you can see just basically questions here answers yes or no or not used or different parameters that you have to put in other settings you can do within the TEC this particular equipment uh, is uh, network setup and this is pretty typical of all the BACnet controllers that we bring in so you could change your BACnet address and then your instant ID and some of the BACnet information here and then you also have what's called the equipment setup and then within the equipment setup you also have your actual equipment uh, commissioning portion of it so again the device list uh, for versus 1.0 gives you capability to basically bring in bring up the control information bring up the status of uh, set certain inputs and output you will be able to control that piece of equipment by changing the set point or, or overriding a certain point and uh, and then also you have access to all the commissioning of that piece of equipment now the reason I have access to all of that information is because I'm an admin I have my admin right and uh, having an admin right gives me capability to uh, to basically have all access to all the information the other piece again from a device pages here or device list here is what we have a zone coordinator and the zone coordinator this will be very typical for a zoning system both on a change or bypass or a VAV system so at the highest level when you click on the zone coordinator uh, you will find the uh, upper higher level of information of all the zones so in this case it will give you what is my rooftop t doing is it on is it continuous it gives you the high level status of the unit at this point this is live information that's coming in and then also gives you information of all the zones that are associated with that rooftop so zone one in this case is satisfied there's a zone temperature of it and then obviously there's the remaining zones and that's why really the fan is in only mode right now meaning it's just fan running there's no cooling obviously there's no heating um, because all the zones this is a change over bypass system all the zones are satisfied so there's no call for any kind of cooling at this point and that's why they're all satisfied if I go back to devices I could even penetrate to the actual zone itself so if I go to the zone itself, there's the high-level description. This is a home page of the zone. Gives you a little bit more information as far as what is the set point of it. It is satisfied. It gives you a damper position of what the position of the damper is. And then some other uh, high-level information uh, around the zone damper itself. You have commissioning. You have set points. You, still, you also have control set point equipment set up and a few other functions and features. The other function and features that are associated with every controller that we do is what we call trend. So a trend is always embedded inside of our controller and as soon as you turn on the controller it continuously starts holding trend information. So in case of a zone damper we have three values that are being trended every 15 minutes. You cannot modify this or you cannot add any trends but it's a good uh, service tool that you can come back and see what's going on with that particular zone damper at a, at a certain time. We keep about uh, roughly around a day and a half to two days worth of data and you can zoom in to certain sections and be able to identify if there's any kind of issues with that particular zone damper. Uh, other sections, there's a lot to cover here but I'm going to have uh, individual uh, videos for these different sections of the settings but just quickly show you of all the different settings we can do uh, within this uh, various system. At this point, this concludes this video. And I hope for you to come back and watch our other videos. Thank you very much.